Salutations, players. It is I, Baron Marius von Perfufeldink, and I know that it's been a while since I've spoken to you all, but I thought that we should continue... Uh, what? What was that? That we should continue our tour around the Empire with a tutorial on how to paint an Astermark crossbowman. What, 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 is, what is that noise? So, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado do... Without further ado... Do let me introduce to you His Royal Majesty, the Emperor Karl Franz. Yeah, thank you, Marius. Yeah, welcome back. What is what is that noise? What is up, players? It is I, the Emperor Karl Franz. And today we are going to be talking about how to paint up an Astermark soldier for my army. Now, today we are going to show you how to paint just the uniform. We are not going to talk about the silly crossbow. Or what is that noise? Or the leather pieces all around, or the wood. Because you might want to paint your Astermark swordsman, or you might want to paint Astermark colors on your knights. So we are only going to be talking about how to paint the clothes in the purple and yellow. And the colors that you are going to need are as follows, so pay attention! First we're going to use Avalon Sunset as the base for our yellow, and then we are going to paint Cassandora Yellow as the shade. And then we are going to paint a real yellow, followed by we are going to conclude with a girly man flash gets yellow. The photo of purple. Yeah, the purple. This is what we are going to do for that. We are going to paint screamer pink. So you want to get that screamer pink and then we are going to paint pink horror. And between those two, like a nice little sandwich is going to be some non-oil. Oh, I love non-oil sandwiches. I eat them every day for breakfast. Ah! So please watch and enjoy, and I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to leave a like and a comment in the box below. And now, I give you to the girly man, Wobos Tay, who has no idea what he's doing to teach you how to paint a soldier in my glorious army. Yeah! Okay guys, so let's get started painting this crossbowman from the League of Ostermark. Um, today we're going to get started with the colors for the uniform, which are, you know, the most prominent thing you see, as always. So, um, I'm going to divide this into quarters. I'm going to divide this guy into quarters again, just like most of my guys. And we're going to start with Screamer Pink for the purple. So, the reason I decided to go with the crossbowman um, was because it says when I was doing my research for Ostermark. I learned that it's the home province of the um, city of Mordheim, which was destroyed by a comet, and it's kind of right on the right on the border to Kislev. So they always are, you know, the first province in the empire to get a taste of the newest chaos incursions. And it says they're a rural state, but I've always thought that purple is a very rich color. In fact, it even says so because the dye is apparently so expensive, the dyes are for the uniforms. So a city like Bogenhafen, Bogenhofen, which is has uh, purple as its main color because it's a merchant city, it's a trading city, so people there are a little bit more rich. Uh, I thought it was interesting that Ostermark's colors were purple and yellow, but I think they're just going for, you know, what other, what other colors haven't we used at this point? Um, Ostermark is also the province of Stefan von Kessel, for those of you who played the in my honest opinion, super awesome real-time strategy game, Warhammer Mark of Chaos, or Battle March. I don't know if I mentioned yet in the introduction part of this video, but I always, for those of you who haven't watched me paint an Empire troop before, any kind of tutorial video, for those new to my channel, I always prime and undercoat my models in usually a duplicate color gray and the gray looks very similar under the light of my table lamp to the gray plastic the gray color of the plastic the games workshop produces so um, don't think that I'm just painting over bare plastic 
I'm always undercoating my models. I just found that I like I like gray more than I like black or white because I feel like the black is just so dark and the white is so bright. I used to prime in black all the time and it was because, you know, it's so much easier to see where all the shadows are to build up from the black, but I feel like when you're priming your models in black, they just kind of, I don't know, you have a tendency, or I have a tendency anyways, to make the models too dark, keep it to keep it kind of in the dark range. We're gonna let the dry and go on to the yellow, which is Averland Sunset. And I figured, you know, since this is, I'm trying to finish up the rest of my, oh my goodness, this guy's arms. Okay, please don't pay attention to the, how bad his arms are. <laughs> what I'm trying to do is make, you know, a comprehensive painting guide for anybody who's interested to follow for any part of their army. So I'm painting a crossbowman right now, but really you could paint, you could use this color scheme for anybody. So I'm gonna only paint the uniform colors, I think, and then I'm gonna go away and paint the rest of my model. And it's gonna cut down on the painting time, or the, the filming time, which uh, most people will appreciate because it's, it just takes so long to do all these base coats and to, uh, to do all the colors on, on all the figures. And they're all mostly, you know, the same process. Painting the skin, painting the leather, painting, you know, so much of it is the same that I figure, you know, nobody's gonna miss those parts of the video. Because you, for those of you who've been watching my other Empire videos, you know, you've seen it, seen it all before. So these are going to be a little bit different because, you know, you might have no crossbowmen, you might only have halberdiers, but this guide is still going to be useful to you. At least I hope it is. I think more than anything, my mission as a YouTuber is to find have, have good accessible videos that people will be able to enjoy and jump into and techniques that people can get started with right off the bat. I always know when my paint is getting down to the end on my wet palette because it gets really thin on the model. That's okay. Better thin and do it in many coats than slap it on straight from the pot. Too thick and gloopy. I have to ask the Emperor the next time I see him why all of his troopers' cod pieces are so prominent. I mean, I know your guys are wearing tights, Carl Franz, but... This is kind of obscene, you know what I mean? Boop. I will not do a close-up on that. But I will paint it. If you're not painting in quarters, if you're painting in like, you know, pants all one color, top all one color, then I don't think it's nearly as bad. But most of these Empire swordsmen or state troopers slash handgunners slash crossbowmen are very obscenely sized cod pieces.
What are you gonna do? The great thing about painting in quarters is that by the time you're done with the fourth quarter, which was what I just painted his leg, the first quarter, which was his purple sleeve, should be done. So, the second step for the purple is we are going to use a non-oil wash. I... Do I have any more non-oil? I might need to go to Bed Bad Black. Yeah, I think my known oil is. Igor? Yes, monster? Find me either known oil or badab black, please. Here you are, monster. Badab black. Do 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 do. You boys get started. <laughs> and this is all from the uh, May 2012 White Dwarf number 388. That is the issue where all of these. Empire men are painted in. In case you want to follow along at home, feel free. You know, it's interesting. They, they do this empire section in like three steps. So, like, for example, Ostermark is you do this screamer pink base coat and then a wash and then a highlight. But then for the yellow, there is no wash. They don't do the Cassandora yellow wash, which I think is bunk. I'm gonna add that because I love that. I love Cassandora yellow. Okay, we're gonna let that Badab Black dry. And like I said, throw on some Cassandora yellow to the yellow side. After the Ogre Fire Belly tutorial, if ever I find a, a reason to use Cassandora yellow, I will, I will do it, baby. Also, because I don't think GW's ever had a way to shade. Oops, sorry about that, folks. I was saying that Games Workshop has never really had a way to shade yellow before. So this new Cassandora yellow is the bomb diggity. Yeah, I um, misjudged how much time it would take to film that first clip because I still had the... Um, oh, I'm gonna sneeze. <coughs> the how to paint Tao skin, Te Tao reel on my camera. I hadn't deleted it yet, so it was taking up too much memory space. Anyways, so I'm just starting to paint on other parts of the model. Nothing to worry about. And the uniform should be pretty clean by now. So we are going to continue building up the purples. And after the known oil dries, you're going to be using, as a highlight color, pink horror. The horror. The horror! <laughs> this is very much... It's like strawberry candy color. Look at that on my wet palette. Doesn't that look like strawberry... Strawberry candy? With, next to the mustard. Hmm, okay, hmm. If this model had like ruffles, it would be a lot easier to paint. So right now we're gonna have to see if we can find all of the... Ooh, boy. Yeah, this might... I don't 
don't know about this. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know about this. All right, scrap that. The heck with that. Maybe it's just not meant to go on as such a bright highlight. I'm painting over it again with Screamer Pink. Um, gonna work our way back up there. It's the known oil, the bad at black, made it pretty dark. So we're just gonna build back up to our original base color. Maybe this is the missing fourth step to the to each part of the article. Cause you got this great shade down, but when you add the highlight color straight to the shaded area, it's gonna come out looking too bright. So we'll try to leave some of that bad at black still around, but. Before we get up to the craziness that was Pink Horror, let's be a little bit more close to the original purple. And I'm thinking that this is the new Sc Screamer Pink. No. Yeah. Is that what that's called? Screamer Pink? The one, the one we're using right now, it's pretty close to the old Warlock Pink. Was it called Warlock Pink? Oh my gosh, I don't even remember what my old colors were called now. It's been so long. Warlock Purple? That sounds more familiar. See, this is much better. I think they should have added something like that onto the article saying um, there is a missing step that you have to paint. It's right after you paint the shade, the paint back up with the base color before you move up to the highlights. See, and that looks much more realistic, less crazy threatening. Okay, let's move on to the yellows. Let's start with the real yellow. I'm actually adding it onto my Averlin Sunset color, which is in my wet palette, which you should all have too. That way we're not jumping right up to it. Yellow is one of the hardest colors to paint. Any one of you, or those of you out there, it's gotta be more than one who owns Imperial Fists. You know what I'm talking about. really using the, uh, the tip of my brush as much as possible. think there's no real reason to do straight pink horror. This strawberry candy color is just a little too pink for my tastes. I think you can add a little bit of it into screamer pink. Get a nice mid highlight but just straight 
pink horror I think is too too emperor's children-y it's not really what I'm going for so I'm gonna just add a little bit of that pink horror color and see what it looks like when we paint that on it's a very very fine highlight Yeah, that's cool. Just paint it onto parts of the cloth that would stretch out. And you should be fine. There we go, so we're doing just a, just a hint of that pink color, just a tiny little suggestion of it to lighten up the, the area and not do like a full out super bright pink, hey, kind of thing. There. That's pretty realistic. I think that looks pretty good. So by now the yellows should be dry. I would switch brushes because we were just doing a pretty, pretty bold highlight and you don't want it to get into any of the yellow color. The well, last yellow color we're going to use is Flash Gets. They call me Flash Gets Yellow. And again, we're not going straight. We are adding it to the Irio Yellow compound that we've just used on our wet palette. It's the great thing about having a wet palette. That Irio Yellow is still moist and, you know, possible to paint with. I'm doing vertical strokes along the way, along the line of the pants. Follows the direction of the movement rather than, you know, perpendicular, which wouldn't make sense when you're going straight down the leg. Follow the lines, follow the lines. Good. Oops, I'm a little bit overboard with the yellows there, but it's okay. Cover up that doofy arm, that derpy arm. Derp a derp. Ta-da! Done!
And there you have it, players. I finished painting up the rest of the model, but the uniform I did not touch. And after some basing and other things to complete the model, I think it looks great. Ostermark, you know, the um, the fluff for Ostermark is is so so interesting and cool. And if you played Battle March and you got to see your little, you know, 3D video game halberdiers and swordsmen and handgunners marching up the field in these purple and yellow colors. It it really made me think when I first got back in the hobby, I really want an empire army of these guys. <laughs> and then I just kind of drift away from them the, you know, the farther away it's been. But I loved painting this guy up. I think purple and yellow is very striking from across the field. Could you imagine like a horde of these guys? Um, just well painted, well balanced looking armies like this is what the hobby is all about. So hope you guys enjoyed this little tutorial and we'll see you in the next video. Stay tuned for more as the tour of the empire continues.